Back when I was confirmed, back when I was 11 years old in the fifth grade, some of us can remember uh, the earlier confirmation years, uh, it was the practice to take a pledge not to drink alcohol until you were 21. Uh, and I can remember uh, Bishop Hackett, who was the Auxiliary Bishop of Hartford and came to uh, St. Bridget's Parish for confirmation. Uh, he administered this pledge. Now, I was very idealistic. I mean, after all, I was only 10 years old, almost 11. Uh, and I also hated the smell of, of beer and alcohol. And so it was going to be a very easy thing for me. We were told about it and I figured, oh, no problem. I don't like it. Um, and so I recited those words with pride. But later on, there was a confirmation party at the house. And my grandfather handed me a glass and he told me it was ginger ale. It smelled funny to me, but I trusted my grandpa and so I took a sip. You guessed it, it was beer. When I looked at him incredulously, he just shrugged his shoulders and said, don't be upset with me, I just did you a favor. You broke the pledge, but you didn't mean to. So now you don't have to be faithful and there's no sin in it for you because you didn't know you were doing it. It's all on me. And he just smiled and walked away. In today's first reading, we see what has been called Israel's original sin. Freed from slavery and born as a people of God at Sinai, Israel violated its covenant promise and worshiped the golden calf, and they intended to do that. And so Moses, when he sees what's, gone, what's happened, he begs God for mercy as Jesus will later intercede for the whole human race, where, where he still, and he still pleads for sinners at God's right hand and through the ministry of the church. Israel's sin is really the sin of the world. It is your sin and it's my sin. Ransomed from death and made God's children in baptism, we fall prey to the idols of this world. We remain a stiff-necked people, resisting God's will for us. Like Israel, we push God away and we re reject and we, we reject our divine childhood. Once he called us my people, but our sin makes us no people, people whom in justice God should disown. Yet in his mercy, God is faithful to the covenant that uh, he swore by his own self in his son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus, God comes to Israel and to each of us as a shepherd to seek the lost, to carry us back to the heavenly feast, the perpetual heritage promised long ago to Abraham's children. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, St. Paul cries out today in the second reading. These are really the happiest words that this world has ever known. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. Because of Jesus, as Paul himself can affirm in his own life, even the blasphemer and the persecutor can seek God's mercy. Even we can seek God's mercy. As the sinners do in today's gospel, we draw near to listen to Jesus. In this Eucharist, we bring him the acceptable sacrifice we sing of in today's song, our hearts humbled and contrite. And in the company of his angels and his saints, we rejoice that he has wiped away our sins. We celebrate with him that we have turned from the evil way of life, that we might live in union with him and each other. Now, there is a longer version of today's gospel, as you probably saw in the Missalette. Uh, it, after these ten, the first 10 verses, the first two parables, you have the whole parable of the prodigal son. And uh, so we didn't read that today, but uh, I think we're very familiar with that story. And um, 
It's also known as the parable of the, pro of the merciful father. It's a beautiful teaching on compassion and forgiveness. And it's really an indictment on our lack of forgiveness of others and our willingness to judge others, even when God says not to. Now, I know the anniversary of 9-11 is really a hard day to preach about mercy and forgiveness. But deep in our hearts, we know that we will never be free, that we will never be healed until we fully recognize that judgment is up to God and not up to us. Oh, and just one more thing. I still hate the smell and taste of beer. And so, Grandpa in heaven, I guess the joke's on you, but I'll always love you anyway. <laughs>